Hello, my name is Andreas Heinrich. I am the director of the IBS Center for Quantum Nanoscience. Welcome to this short tour of our facility. Thanks to the strong support of Eva Women's University, QNS is located in a brand new building, which is quite amazing. Together with my engineering team, I was heavily involved in the design of this building from the very beginning. Much of our work uses scanning tunneling microscopy, also called STM. An STM uses a metal needle that is held only two to three atom diameters away from a surface. Needless to say, this requires incredible stability, and hence, we need to be isolated from the noise and the vibrations that our city creates around us. We decided to build two buildings, the main one and the low vibration space, and we will start our tour in the low vibration space. We decided to completely separate the two buildings. There is also no elevator and no bathroom in this space, again, all to limit vibrations. We started with a 1.4 meter thick concrete plate, which took about 150 concrete trucks just to pour this. Then we created eight concrete blocks, each weighing 80 tons that are floating on these huge air springs. The result is an amazingly low level of vibrations, probably the best in Korea, and as good as the best labs in the world. Yu Chang will introduce more about our STM labs. Hello, my name is Yu Chang Bae. I'm leading a research group for the study of surface atoms using a scanning tunneling microscope. Our team is using two home-built STM systems that can be used at very high frequencies, which enables for single atom electron spin resonance, also called ESR. In general, the resolution of ESR is not limited by temperature, and therefore the energy resolution of ESR STM is about 10,000 times higher than conventional STM spectroscopy. FAB is incorporated with a dilution refrigerator and two axis magnets, and FAB is operating down to about 30 millikelvin, which is the lowest temperature in QNS. Based on our measurement of a superconducting gap, the electron temperature is about 100 millikelvin. The other system, nicknamed EVE, is fully home built. Our team designed the whole part, assembled one by one and tested the operation over the last two years. The system is currently working in the variable temperature ranging from 1 Kelvin to 20 Kelvin and has just given us its first ESR STM spectra. We have another ESR STM called ELIS and Suyeon will give introduce this. Hello, I'm Suyeon. I'm leading one of QNSS ESR STM teams. Here, we are specifically focusing on multiple spin qubit systems. Currently, uh, we are developing a way to control and read the quantum states of two coupled titanium spins that are sitting on magnesium oxide by using electron spin resonance. To this end, we are using an STM running at 0.4 Kelvin with fine control of the magnetic field and which can apply radio frequency signals to the STM. The microscope is positioned at the center inside this door, which is filled by liquid helium and contains superconducting magnets. Radio frequency signals generated here are applied to the microscope through these cables and drive ESR of our atomic spins. This is showing an STM image of real artificial atomic structure composed of two titanium and one ion atoms. The distances between the atoms are just about one nanometer. This subject is at the forefront of the field of quantum information science using qubits consisting of atomic spin on surfaces. Now, this is the time to introduce our AFM STM team. Hi. My name is Jung Seok Che, leading a group to study of spin on insulator using the AFM, Atomic Force Microscopy. Our team upgraded two old STMs inherited from Professor Young Cook at Seoul National University into AFM STM, nicknamed Oracle and Adam. The AFM allows to access insulating surfaces, and we are exploring spins on insulators 
to understand the origin of quantum decoyers. Oracle is equipped with a so-called Q plus 4 sensor and with a home-built low temperature preamplifier. When we are using metal tips, we can operate the AFM and STM operation modes simultaneously. In the presence of magnetic field, we are focusing on single spin detection using a spin-polarized AFM tip. So far, we have looked at some of our equipment on the B2 floor. Now, let's move to B1 and we will continue to explain about our other AFM, Adam, and more equipment. So, this is Adam. Adam is a prototype AFM, which does not include magnetic fields. Recently, we use it to the force applied by a single hydrogen molecule. We are using this system for high resolution imaging of atoms and molecules with functionalized AFM tips. Now, we will introduce Surface Science ESR from Fabius Group. Hello, I'm Fabio. My team investigates surface spins using ensemble electron spin resonance. Our group does not focus on scanning probes to characterize individual atoms or molecules on surfaces. Instead, we collect the properties of a large number of spins at once using microwave radiation. The specialty of our machine is to perform such measurement on clean surfaces with the spin deposited on the surface and measured without breaking the vacuum. Our team can perform different characterizations, such as continuous wave, pulsed electron spin resonance, double electron, and electron nuclear resonance. We can use magnetic field up to 3 tesla and temperature from 5 Kelvin to room temperature. For its temperature range and combination of spin resonance techniques, this machine is unique in the world. We also focus on X-ray absorption spectroscopy, performed at domestic and international synchrotrons. With these, we identify potential surface spins with the quantum state that can be controlled in a coherent way. And now, we will introduce Naomi Lab. Hi, my name is Luciano Colazzo, and I'm a chemist. QNS has a strong interest in exploring a chemical path to quantum information. The goal of my group is to synthesize and explore molecular-based qubits on surfaces. And the STM systems at QNS are a perfect tool to explore molecular spin qubits. They are capable of delivering structural and spectroscopic investigation with atomic precision. A benefit of tailoring the chemical design of molecular qubits is that its local environment can be better controlled in order to preserve its coherence and boost its performances. Now, let's move to the chemistry lab. And here we are in the chemistry lab. We are in the process of implementing chemical synthesis capabilities in QNS, as well as advanced tool for transferring molecules on a surface. We are aiming at on-surface synthesis of array of molecular qubits by using a chemical approach. This will help us tackling the major challenges toward the future implementation of molecular qubits in the solid state. And now, the word goes to my colleagues in MV Center. Hi, I am Aftab Farooq, a postdoctoral researcher working in a group of quantum sensing and information based on Diamond and Center. Our group focuses on two main goals. The first is developing novel scanning magnetometer based on Diamond and Center and studying exotic magnetism in condensed matters. The second is connecting the surface spin with subsurface NV centers with the help of scanning probe microscopy and realizing heterogeneous qubit networks. These requires a combination of two different techniques and expertise. We have combined a confocal optics and qubit control methodologies of diamond and me center with scanning probe techniques and have constructed novel scanning magnetometers operating from room temperatures down to a several Kelvin. 
the technique enable us to sense and image tiny magnetic field with the nanometer scale resolution. For instance, we have successfully studied exotic magnetism on 2D wonder wall materials and imaging current dynamics in our transport devices. Now we will move to the control room. That is a very special place at QNS. As you could see, our STMs are very sensitive to vibration and we need to not be in the room when we're taking our data. Therefore, we created a special control room where the experimental teams, as well as our theory team can come together, look at the data as they come in, discuss them and make new science. Hi, I'm Christoph Wolf. QNS has a dedicated theory team that focuses on modeling the physics of surface spin systems in silico that is on a computer. The theory team is involved in most of QNS's experiments by providing computational results that support experimental findings. Going beyond such support, we also guide new experiments by optimizing conditions to achieve a desired outcome. To achieve this, the theory team has access to a variety of tools that range from pencil and paper to complex computational methods. The latter include density functional theory calculations, model Hamiltonians and frequently a combination of these two. This strikes the balance between computational efficiency and accuracy of the models involved in order to match experimental needs. The close integration of theory and experiments has proven to be of great advantage in the rapidly evolving field of surface spins and we are looking forward to tackling new challenges together. And now we move to the engineering team. Hi, my name is Lei and I'm working in QNS engineering team. Most of the tools that you have seen require liquid helium to cool them down to very low temperatures. When liquid helium evaporates in our experiments, it creates a large volume of gas. This gas runs through these pipes, which we install to the liquefier room. Here, we catch the gas in these balloons. From the balloons, the gas gets pumped out, cleaned, and then liquefied in these noisy tools. We then transport the liquid helium back to the experiment to refill them. We recover more than 94% of the gas and reuse it. Currently, QNS can liquefy 160 liters per day and we will soon upgrade to 240 liters. We estimate that this facility saves over 1 million US dollars per year in the cost of liquid helium. Greetings from Ihua Women's University. My name is Inmei Kim and I am the 17th president of Ihua Women's University. Since its establishment in 2017 under the agreement between Ihua Women's University and the Institute for Basic Science, the Center for Quantum Nanoscience has been conducting world-class research in the field of quantum nanoscience and laid the foundation for future technology development. Ihua is proud of our shared commitment with QNS to develop the next generation of female scientists in quantum physics. In order to establish an environment conducive to world-class research, IHWA applied a vibration-free design to the Research Cooperation Building to house QNS. The in-depth research on quantum nanoscience at QNS will lead IHWA to strengthen its capacity as a research university and play a leading role in science and technology development. In celebration of IHWA's 135th anniversary, IHWA announced a new development plan entitled IHWA Vision 2030 Plus, with its new vision, a creative and innovative platform leading to a sustainable society. With this new vision, we affirmed our commitment toward becoming a leading research university in the world. As we have done for the past 135 years, IHWA will continue to open new frontiers to nurture female leadership in global science research, 
creating a firm foundation for future science and engineering research. IHWA and QNS are fully committed to continue to strengthen and deepen our partnership for new discoveries in the field of quantum nanoscience. QNS is engineering the quantum future by performing basic science research at the intersection of quantum science and nanoscience. QNS engages directly with the Korean public. Before the pandemic, we hosted an incredibly successful art contest where we combined quantum science and art, which we hope to repeat this year. We also created a fun curriculum on nanoscience for middle school students. We have now run 10 classes with over 220 students and the feedback has been truly amazing. I hope that you could get a glimpse of the international aspect of our center. I would like to also mention that we are on a first name basis and that we use English for all of our communication. We are lucky to be in Korea and we recognize the amazing trust and investment that the Korean community is making in QNS. Thank you for taking this tour with us and getting to know QNS better. We are proud to be helping to lead Korea's efforts into the new quantum era.